This session is about discovering strategies. And by the end of this session, you'll be able to explain the nature and importance of strategies, identify the factor to consider in eliciting strategies, and analyze and use the TOPE model to identify parts of a strategy. So, what are strategies? Well, we achieve the results that we do by running programs that enable us to be excellent or not. When we eat, drink, learn, talk, buy, sell, make friends, we do all of this unconsciously and rarely think about how we consciously do the things that are second nature to us. An unconscious program runs all of what we do so that we can get up each day and live our lives without having to think about everyday activities consciously. We have programs for getting dressed, cleaning our teeth, handling conflict, motivating ourselves, getting our work done, and so on and so on. And these programs are known as strategies. A strategy is a series of representations that we put together in a particular sequence in order to achieve a specific result. For example, in order for me to motivate myself to write a training session, I will have a strategy. I will do, see, hear, feel, think things in a particular way and order that will end up with me being motivated. It might be that I look at my objectives and then see a picture of myself delivering the program to a group I then think to myself about whether it will be fun or not. And if I see myself enjoying the program, then I feel good and that motivates me. That will be my motivation strategy for writing a training session. So why would you want to discover your own or another person's strategy? Finding out the strategy used to do a problem or helping someone else discover how they do a problem is important in being able to change it and move forward. That's what the reality part of the coaching model is all about. Another reason is, if you understand your own resourceful strategy, you can then replicate it across other contexts for yourself to achieve your goals. For example, if I discover my motivation strategy for writing training sessions, I can use the same strategy for motivating myself to mow the lawn. I can see my objectives and see myself mowing the lawn and making it fun and then feel good and then go and then be motivated to do it. And lastly, by eliciting and understanding and utilizing someone else's strategy, you'll be able to feed back into their programs for decision making, model their strategy and use it for yourself, or model it and use it to train others in a particular skill. So an important part of modeling is being able to elicit their strategy for doing whatever it is that you're, they're doing. And then you can discover the series of internal and external representations that they have that lead them to achieving the results that they achieve. So discovering strategies is really useful in helping someone with problems and in finding resourceful strategies for yourself and for being able to model out strategies so that you can train other people. Let's start off on this journey of discovery by thinking about the TOTE model. The TOTE model is a useful one to understand how strategies work. It was first introduced in Plans and the Structure of Behaviour by Miller, Galantler and Prebrew. It's a sequence based on computer modelling, where the quality of the data that you receive is based on the quality of the data inputted. Miller, Galant and Prebrew identified that all complex behaviours are the result of a series of steps that happen as a tote model. TOTE stands for Test, Operate, Test, Exit. It takes you from setting the criteria for the results that you want from the strategy to accessing or gathering the data and then comparing the information or data that you've gathered with the criteria you set in the first test and if they are the same then you will exit the strategy. So how does all that work? So 
let's think about the different components of the tote model and how it all works. The first test comprises of two things. First of all, it's what triggers the strategy and it sets the criteria for the second test. The trigger is what happens, usually outside the person, that starts the strategy. For example, if I want to elicit my hair brushing strategy, I don't spend all day every day thinking about brushing my hair. There's something that happens that lets me know it's time to brush my hair. It might be perhaps that once I've brushed my teeth in the morning, I look in the mirror and look at the state of my hair. So looking in the mirror is the trigger that then starts the strategy. It may well be different in other people, but that could be my trigger. This would all be unconscious. Until I'm asked, I probably have no conscious knowledge of this process. It just happens. Also, at this point, I'll set the criteria for knowing that my hair is OK and I can stop brushing it. The criteria could be that I feel and see that there are no tangles. I see it straight and tidy and I feel good about it. Those could be the criteria that I set. When you're modelling someone, you'll want to discover what it is that starts them running the strategy that they run to achieve the excellence. And what are the criteria that they set at that point? For example, if you admire the way someone handles conflict at a meeting, you'll want to discover how do they know when to start the strategy off. What is it that lets them know it's time to start the strategy that you're interested in? What is it that they see or hear happening that lets them know it's time to do what they do? You want to be quite specific. If they say, oh, I can see they're not getting on, well, what is it that they are seeing that lets them know that the people are not getting on? There has to be something quite specific that lets them know in their model of the world that it's time to start the conflict handling strategy. And that will be unconscious. Also, find out what are their criteria that they set at that point for letting them know when it will be OK to exit the strategy. If you're coaching someone and modelling out the problem strategy, you'll want to know the same information. What triggers the strategy and what are the criteria they set? This all ties in with why we talked about going to one context and getting the trigger when we were thinking about the reality section of the GROW model. The operation phase of the TOTE model is where you gather data by using different representational systems to move the strategy from the present state towards the desired state and feeds directly into the second test. For example, with my hair brushing strategy, I will gather information by brushing the hair and feeling and looking for the tangles and looking for my hair to become straight and tidy and about how I feel about my hair. So you're looking for what the person does to gather the data. What do they see, hear, feel, taste, smell or say to themselves in order to move them from the trigger to the second test? And in what order do they do that? Because both what they do and the sequence in which they do it is important in achieving what they achieve. The second test is a comparison with some or all of the data gathered from the operations phase. And that's the comparison is with the criteria established by the first test. The two things compared must be represented in the same representational system. For example, when I do the second test on my hair brushing, I'll be comparing what my hair is like with the criteria or standard that I set in the first test or trigger. So, in modelling out the strategy, you'll want to find out how the person does the second test and how they know when to exit the strategy and also what they do when they find that they've not met the criteria. Sometimes the difference that makes the difference is not when the strategy goes well, but when the strategy doesn't go according to plan and what the person does then. There was an American Olympic diver who was doing really well when the rest of the American divers were not so successful. And when he was modelled, they discovered something very interesting. 
In training, all the divers were being taught that it was essential to jump from what was known as the sweet spot on the diving board if you wanted to execute a good dive. But when Greg Luganis was modelled, what they discovered was that as far as he was concerned, what was important was that wherever you took off from the diving board, you could still adjust and execute the excellent dive. When the other divers understood this, then that made a big difference to their performance too. So if at the second test the person discovers that not all the criteria have been met, then they may firstly go back to the operations phase and get some more data, just like I talked about when I was saying about brushing my hair. Or the other thing that they may do is to adjust the original criteria. For example, if one of my original criteria for brushing my hair had been I should brush my hair a thousand strokes, I may find that this is not necessary for what I want to achieve and adjust the criteria to brushing it 20 strokes of the brush. I've known this also happen when people go and look for houses to buy, for instance. So they will set down a great list of things that they want from the house. And then maybe they'll go out and start hunting for houses. And they discover that it's just impossible to get all that they want uh, in the price range that they want. And so then they have to start looking at their criteria and adjusting those so that they can then find a house with some of the things that they want at the price that they can afford. Another thing that can sometimes happen is refining or further specifying the outcome. For example, with the hair brushing, I may want to refine my outcome to being brushing my hair for when I'm going to the office. So with clients, if they find that their criteria are not being met, they can do one of those three things in order to help. Firstly, to go back to the operations phase and get more data, or they can think about their criteria and think about whether those are reasonable for them for what they want to achieve and adjust those, or they can look at their outcome that they wanted in the first place. The last part of the tote model is the exit or decision point and is a representation of the results of the second test. If at the second test all the criteria have been met, the strategy exits. If they've not been met, then the strategy will recycle. For example, if when the second test has been done, my hair has met all the criteria, I'll stop brushing my hair. If I find that there are still some tangles, then I'll go back to the operations phase and brush some more. The tote model is useful to know because it gives you a template for the questions you'll want to ask to elicit a strategy. Ask them to remember a particular situation where they did what they did excellently. And in the first test you might want to ask things like what triggers the behaviour? What is it outside of themselves that lets them know it's time to start the strategy? What criteria do they set? How will they know when they've got the result that they want? In the operations phase, then you can ask, what do they hear, see, feel and think? Then what do they hear, see, feel and think? And then what? And so on until you finish the operations phase. And in the second test, the sort of questions you might want to ask are, how do they know when they've reached the result that met their criteria? What do they do when they find that they haven't reached their standard? Here's an exercise to get you used to working with the tote model. Find a partner to work with and ask them to think of something that they bought when they were on their own and which they were pleased with the purchase. And discover how they use the tote model in their purchasing strategy by using detailed questioning. So ask them how they knew it was time to go and buy the purchase. What was it that triggered the strategy? Ask them what they wanted in their purchase. And really find the details of both these things. Then ask them what they did to find what they wanted. What did they see, hear, feel, think and in what order? And keep asking these types of questions until you discover exactly what the person did. 
and then asked them how they knew they had found what they wanted and write down the sequence that you uncover. The tote model is a very useful one to become familiar with. This process is the same for uncovering any strategies. The tote model is useful for discovering strategies to model and for discovering strategies that coaching clients are currently using to achieve the results that they're getting and so to examine where they may want to change. Practice with several other people so that you get expert at eliciting strategies.